Hey folks, today we delve deep into the forbidden zone that is my garage. It's a little loud, uh, normally too cluttered to shoot in. I took care of at least half that. <laughs> On top of that today, we're going to take some uh, temporary propagation bins and we're going to upgrade them to mega bins. Mega bins. And that's all coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and it's been a while. I have filmed in my garage before, but it's been quite a bit. It's a, a little bit echoey, yeah, echoey, not the nicest, <laughs> and uh, I don't want it to be too annoying, but it is nice to have another place to shoot. Uh, I basically, I needed kind of a, a work table type space. Uh, it's really hard to do stuff in a home without messing up, like, you know, something your spouse would be angry with you about. And I had the time, and it was high time that I uh, that I took care of this garage. I, I don't know if you guys have a garage just like in disrepair at the moment. It's funny how easy to ignore things are that aren't in your everyday path, and how you can just walk around something and let, just let it go to hell. I feel like a huge weight's lifted though, and I love I love my clean, organized garage. Uh, I still made it a workspace, especially in, in storage space for aquascaping. If you're into aquascaping and, and making like natural environments in the home, you end up with a lot of like rocks and wood and stuff like that. These are things that aren't usually easily uh, uh, easily stored in a house anywhere. I mean, you could probably artistically place some driftwood, <laughs> but after it's been used, like I never throw anything away or I, don't, I throw as little away as possible. So when I dismantle uh, an aquarium or something like that, I end up keeping a lot of the materials, the filters, the lights, the heaters, and the wood and the rocks and, and sometimes the dirt. Not usually though. That's usually the one thing I let go of. So this all started Monday when I decided that I needed to move some things around to make room for ter some terrariums. I wanted to make uh, a, a place to display my terrariums upstairs. And I also wanted to install some propagation lights and stuff, so I started moving things around and of course I got a lot done on the first day, but I ended up hurting my back. It took about two days. Now, I kept working, but I was working much, much slower. <laughs> and the first day, like Tuesday, I was completely uh, wiped out. And the rest of the week, I had to move at like the snail's pace. So I felt like I couldn't get anything really done. It's very frustrating uh, approaching 50. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever said that before, but yeah, that's true. It is true. I can confirm. So if we head into the time machine for just a little bit, you'll see uh, in the not far past uh, me finishing up the, really the organ or moved every the most <laughs> most of the stuff. I'm not really showing it before because it's too embarrassing. But you guys have seen my rack of stuff before, so you'll you'll know the difference if you've been watching my videos for a while. All right, so I've been working in here all day, and actually for about for about a week, on and off, not completely. And and, and I wanted to kind of show you where we're at. This is the first time I've probably shown uh, my garage with a wide lens, if ever, maybe, because <laughs> it's the cleanest it's been in a long, long time. Uh, the fact is, things just pile up. This becomes a place for you. You know, I not only store things, but the, you know, when I don't know what to do with it, it kind of ends up in here. Now I've got it fairly organized. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll be much more useful. Uh, starting here are my buckets. Uh, my buckets used for various different things. Uh, I'm probably gonna find a better way to keep these. Also, uh, my python right here. Uh, gonna get something better to store that with. I'm still working on that though. I've taken my work tables, these used to be separated. I've, I've put them together so I could work on maybe bigger projects and stuff once I kind of get some stuff cleared. Uh, of course, the drawers are shot up this way, and then there's the two drawers on the other side. Over here, I've got a rack, and uh, most of this rack is going to be substrate oriented. Uh, I've got my small bags of substrate and some partial bags of substrate. Down here in this lower uh, part, I've got more bulk storage. And so like right here, I've got some lava rock. 
a big giant bag of pebbles, some pool filter sand, and some lump charcoal. Uh, underneath I've got bins of like various different things. I believe these are these are like some hang on the back filters. Some used hang on the back filters and, and stuff like that. Uh, this is sort of a miscellaneous box from stuff I brought from upstairs. Uh, a couple of projects I haven't gotten to and just storage for other things. In here I've got canister filter stuff. And in here, I forgot what I did with this. Oh, this is all... This is mostly air pump stuff. There's some hoses and other things in here too, but this is mostly for air-driven products. Over here on the shelf, I got my big wood. <laughs> got some big wood up there. This is an absolutely enormous piece of uh, wood that was in one of my big tanks a long time ago. A big 55 from early on. Uh, large pieces of manzanita wood that just kind of take up the whole place. Just, uh, and some spider wood too, kind of mixed in there too. So, all that's stored up there. Got my smaller and used pieces of wood in here. And I put them in one of these so I can pull this down off the shelf and really dig through it. Uh, same with the rocks. The rocks are probably a little too heavy for one of these little uh, crates, but it's a good way to kind of put them all in here, in here and store them. I'd really like a solution, uh, if I get more space in the future, I'd probably like to separate these out into the different types of rocks and stuff so I could really see what I'm working with. And of course, on the side here are smaller things and uh, rock dust and stuff that's really handy. Uh, looks like I've got some aquascaping materials in here. This is all from uh, little projects that have already happened. I've just kind of left some stuff in there. And I got some, you know, little decorations. Got some filters that I haven't dug into yet. It's kind of stored down there below. Of course I've got my backup 55 in case something has a problem or I want to start a project out here. We've got a big 55. It's pretty much new. Uh, this is the one I set up when I had to redo my floors. I brought all my fish in here and I set them up on one of these tables. <laughs> that was a while ago. Uh, I've added this. Of course, I got some little nano tanks uh, on the top. Uh, I've set up these lights here. These are lights I bought a long time ago. They're LED grow lights. Uh, typically, typically uh, sold to indoor farmers, if you know what I mean. And I'm using them as propagation. I'm going to use them as like little propagation vessels for uh, terrariums and stuff like that. I could actually add water in these and do some water plants too if I wanted, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a little propagation tank, this and this. for I got this for the, like the taller plants and this for like the mosses and stuff. Uh, right now I'm just using some little bins like this and they've been working out okay, but um, I think this is going to be a lot better. So I'm excited about that and I could even add more, you know, if I want because there's plenty of room up here to add a, a bunch of these, if I need to. Down below, I've got storage for other things. Uh, this is mostly uh, places to hide, like different types of hides for Placos and stuff. Um, I believe this one's all botanicals. This one's all CO2 stuff. Uh, this is more air-driven stuff. As we get lower, uh, old used LED lights and stuff like that. Uh, down in here, I've got a lot of miscellaneous products and stuff that I haven't really gotten to yet. And uh, stuff like that. It's kind of a mixture of different things. Got another Kessel stashed away in there. This is all like, this is mostly chemicals. Uh, Ferts and stuff that I haven't used. And stuff like that. So there's piles and piles of stuff, but mostly it's organized, so when I do decide to use them, you know, I can really take advantage of that. And that's good. And if we make our way over to the other side, of course we've got the proverbial bikes of the garage, 
Christmas decorations, but also I've set up a shelf uh, for most of uh, my terrarium stuff. So I've got the things that I use specifically for the terrarium and this last project uh, kind of set aside over here. Uh, I'm going to get some bins and kind of organize this a little bit better too, but for now I've got a space uh, just for the terrariums, which is cool. Or the terrarium building materials. All right, and up here I've got this thing that I've installed. Or uh, I brought Kerrigan help me drag this upstairs. And uh, ignore the paint stick stabilizers. I'm going to paint these or get, get rid of them. Um, they were added by someone else. So the plan is to mount these lights in the top here. And there'll be uh, little grow out lights for things that I put in here. So I could put terrariums in both of these. <clears throat> I pulled out this little nano tank because it looks like it would fit in here really nicely and I might, I don't want to put anything too heavy. This is not a super stable platform. <clears throat> but I thought it might be nice to put like some really small projects maybe here and here. And then uh, put more storage in the bottom. Oh, and this is kind of funny too. My mom, uh, this is me in, I guess, college. My mom painted a picture of me with my long, luxurious hair, and um, everybody thought it was Jesus. And we all thought that was really funny. And so, I, I don't really have it hanging up here. I just kind of found it behind something, and I stuck it here so it wouldn't get damaged. But uh, this is not me being a narcissist or overly religious. It's just a picture that's there for now. This is one of the lights that I'm putting up there. Uh, this one's got more of that, like the center one, and the other one's a more traditional board with ones all across. But the light, the, the color's not, not too different, not too bad. And as you see, they both connect, they have the same frame, and they both connect with like a little, um, little screw right there. So the way it used to work is you would attach this with some, there's be some adhesive and this would slide into it and you could run the cord you know, through this little hole right there. And then you'd attach a screw, uh, hello. You'd attach a screw right there in the, in the center. And then it would kind of go onto here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a screw right through the top. I'm gonna put a screw right through the top of the, um, of the cabinet and then just screw it into here and skip this whole thing. And I'll have a nice light for terrariums upstairs. All right, so I got them installed, and uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit of color difference. I don't think it's going to be too annoying once I put things in there, but you can see the cabinets actually, it looks uh, both lighter and a different color from one another. So <laughs> it is neat the way those installed, just kind of right there at the top though. It's a real simple installation, just kind of ran a screw. Just ran a screw through the top, fits right under this jar pretty well. And uh, into that bolt. So they can actually be moved around a little bit, a little bit more forward and back. And yeah, I got a nice little spot for uh, some small terrariums. I think you'll agree it's a much more peaceful and easy way to appreciate um, uh, the materials you had to work with than it was before, which is just like pile up <laughs> a big pile of stuff on one rack. The big step one for this was kind of swapping the racks. So uh, this one behind me I bought, it's just a five tier rack, I got it at Lowe's. Uh, one of those kind of plasticky things. I kind of, I have a lot of those. But, that, but this really gives me a lot of room to work. I could even aquascape in here, maybe. I could even throw up a background. It'd be really easy to do at this point because I've cleared out the junk from the sides. Not really sure what else to do with the drill press. I guess you're going to live here for now. But I'm excited to have a workspace to work on and uh, celebrate. I thought we'd do our first little project, which is uh, taking propagation bins and increasing the size. Now, this one, I kind of have plants in. I kind of have, okay. I definitely have plants in both of these. <laughs> this one, I've got some uh, larger plants. None of it's stuff that really needs this kind of height. But I want to include a few other things. Now, it is kind of narrow at the bottom. 
which limits me a little bit, but I'm going to take as much of this as I can out and add it here, and then just kind of combine and make this bigger. This bin's already bioactive. I've added springtails to it, so uh, I'll be bringing them along too. That probably won't be a part of this video. I'm just going to see uh, how the population does as it moves from one to the other. I believe it's in good shape. A lot of this was uh, propagated out of the wild a few, uh, few weeks ago. And some of them were leftovers from the last project. I didn't know what else to do with. And this we have moss, and it's kind of the same story. I've got a smaller, shallower bin that uh, you know still has it still tapers up, which probably isn't the best. Like it maybe be better to take advantage of all of your space that you need. It'd be better if it was flat, but but anywho, uh, so. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of add all the materials I need to make this work. Uh, of course, I'll have to change the, the filter or the, uh, the screen that's over it. Then I'm going to take the contents of this and I'm going to kind of work it in along the way. I didn't end up using all the moss because um, it was such a small aquascape I did with the, with the indoor waterfall. So I guess the first thing I need to do is uh, cut some screen to fit these things. This one's just a small bit wider than the other one. Here I have some uh, screen door mesh. All right, so what I did here is I, I cut a little bit of mesh that's a little bit, it's a little bit longer than it needs to be. Uh, not a lot, but just a little bit. And I think that's gonna help keep the substrate out of the next layer or some of the, the early drainage layers of this bin. This one's just a hair bigger than this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this, uh, this piece here and use it as a template. So I automatically know it's gonna work. It's not, it's not so much bigger that it's a problem, but uh, if it was smaller, it'd be a bigger problem. So I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing, but instead, I'm going to just kind of lay this here. Quick and easy, no fuss. All right, so we've got you. This is a little bit. My OCD will bug me, but I'll trim it a little bit. There we go. And uh, this one we got here for you. That's, yeah. A little too big, just like we thought it would be. <laughs> this actually does a better job of doing what I was uh, wanted to demonstrate. That's why I didn't mind cutting it a little bit bigger. So as you can see down there in the bottom, it goes uh, it goes up the sides just a little bit, which is going to kind of cradle the dirt. Cradle. All right. So the first thing we got here uh, that we're going to need now is going to be some uh, a drainage layer. And we're gonna to need to add some rocks. And here I added some rocks that I just don't like a lot. Last time I did this, I had, uh, I used this gravel. This is some white gravel I got for, uh, I got for this aquarium uh, I did a long time ago. I guess it was, uh, it was one of those little nano beta aquaponics tanks. I set it up, I didn't like it a whole lot, so I eventually got rid of it. But I bought this funky white gravel that I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna aquascape with again, probably. And I'm throwing this in here to let you know that if you've got gravel that's maybe a little unsightly, you certainly don't need to uh, dress this up for anyone. It's gonna be in Tupperware. And it doesn't matter what it looks like, it only matters what it works like. And for that reason, I'm gonna throw some of this in. This is a, uh, this is some little pea gravel that that I don't particularly like for aquariums. And we're gonna mix this up for a nice little drainage layer where the water can kind of uh, seep into and, and stay to kind of continue that cycle because we're basically, we're gonna, we're gonna top this off and the humidity is gonna keep it alive. But we've got a little reservoir for the, uh, for the water to live in. Another thing we have here are some peat gravel. This is really cheap gravel you can get at like a Lowe's or Home Depot, a store like that, big box. Um, 
gardening store. I don't think I really need much in this. This is probably sufficient layer, especially when I combine it with what's uh, already in the one that I have set up already. So I'm gonna use this for the other one. This one's, whoop, <laughs> got some leftovers here. This one, um, this one's a lot taller. We'll have probably bigger plants and stuff like that too. So it only makes sense to kind of uh, make the storage layer a little chunkier. This will definitely help keep it from toppling over too. <laughs> You got a nice good layer of the, like the peat gravel on the bottom. Uh, what I have here is another, this is actually another box of stuff that I've just picked and uh, uh, maybe we'll go over another day about how I, I go and I, and I source these. But let's go ahead and dismantle these things and get them, um, get them ready to go. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to just lift this off of here the best I can. And that should just leave the gravel down below and keep everything else all right. All right. So now it's just the gravel and we'll add that in. You know, there may be a springtail in there too. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to do the same for the moss. So I'm going to put it in a different bin. I'm pretty sure I have enough, so I'm just going to keep all this gravel together. All right, now I'm ready for some charcoal. <laughs> all right, so I've just crunched this up myself. I'm using lump charcoal. It's not uh, not fancy in any way, shape, or form. I'll use this one first so you can see it. I have looked up and read uh, lump charcoal probably doesn't work as well as uh, horticulture charcoal or activated carbon. But it is much cheaper. Oh, I thought my bits were gonna be much smaller than what we have here. I'll just make a few adjustments. Put some charcoal here towards the middle. I'm gonna kind of separate it. So this might not work as this definitely is not the same as uh, activated carbon or or as something I haven't seen yet, which is horticultural charcoal. But it will work according to a few other experts I knew. And it's much cheaper. So I have a fair amount of activated carbon. I'm gonna wait and just use that on my actual terrariums. And for uh, for this stuff, they get the lump charcoal. So we've got a lot, a layer of that, probably too much, frankly, of that. And we're gonna do this one. Yeah. Okay, so now that the charcoal is down, I'm gonna use uh, what's left of the tropical mix that I initially made. And I'm just going to throw this down on top and see where we're at. Okay, so I'm gonna start this off with some uh, potting soil. Add that right in there. We're gonna do some sand. 
do roughly the same amount of sand. So we're going to add some, uh, I've got some orchid bark, we're going to add some of that in there. Then twice as much sphagnum moss as everything else. I'm going to add some water, some dechlorinated water. Give it a good mix. I'm making a mess. I probably could have used a bigger bin. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just continue this layer on here. I'm going to take the uh, this is still in the cloth and everything, so it's got this charcoal. It's like it's own little mini version. Uh, I'm going to put it on here anyway, just lay it out here. Hopefully I'll have some springtails and anything else that was uh, running around in there that I tried to use before. And I've got a lot more room, obviously, <laughs> than I did before my other propagation chamber. We'll finish this out in just a second. Ugh. Bring this bad boy over here. And uh, we're going to finish this up with the same. I'll make sure it's nice and mixed in here. Some sand collecting in the corners there. I'm just going to dump this in. Of course, I'll have to make some more for my next terrarium. And it's basically the same ingredients as uh, you'd use in a terrarium, so. All right. Now I got this recipe from Surfer Design who obviously makes lots and lots of videos about this sort of thing. All right. And so uh, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with, with the other one and save these plants and their uh, and the little springtails, any little springtails that are still left running around in there. And just kind of set it up in its own little segment right here. It's really had a lot of excess. I wonder if I could just get it right off of this mesh without messing things up too bad. Just don't want to disrupt the apple cart too much, but here we go. Oh, that's not bad. Little springtails alive on there. I have to remember that there are little living things in here. Try to act accordingly. All right, so we had some plants that just didn't have room to grow that maybe will grow for me now. And knowing, I know that I've got some plants over in the uh, steampunk tank that need to come out. So what I'll do is I'll just plant some of these other ones, kind of get them started in and around here. A lot of them were real dehydrated. I actually collected them a while ago. All right, so no tall plants in this yet. I plan on using this for a lot of different things, but uh, that's at least a start. And I'll be putting some, pulling some other plants and putting them in here as well. So I wanna leave some room in there. All right, and over here we got the moss. The one for the moss. And I'm gonna do the same thing and just see if I can just kinda of whoop. Move that over. All right. You have to look real close and sometimes, yep, I see little springtails in there. Good, all right, so they can have a bigger place to roam. And I wanna add some more mosses. 
got some some pretty ones I found around. Uh, this isn't really a moss, but it's really uh, I don't know actually know what it is, <laughs> but I thought it was kind of neat. I think technically this should probably go in the other one, so I'm gonna put it in here. So if you know what these mosses are, use the combination of the time code in the comments to let me know, because I would really like to, to know. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and, uh, the plan was to actually to uh, get in there and figure out which ones of these were as soon as I got them home, but that didn't happen. All right, and we got one more that I'm putting in here. I think this is a fairly common one. I see it a lot, and uh, I used it a lot on the other scapes, so I'm gonna just kind of spread that around here. It does seem different looking at it compared to, to this. Well, no, that's probably the same. Probably the same stuff. This definitely is different, and this also. So I've got a couple of different kinds of moss to play with and uh, propagate. Now to finish these off, I'm gonna add some more water. And uh, I'm not gonna add a whole lot, just uh, just a little bit, just enough to get maybe a quarter inch of, of moisture down here in the, in the bottom layer. I've added a fair amount, but the sphagnum moss uh, picks it up too, so. I'm gonna put whatever's left of this in there. All right, so I've added the water and I've added the plants that I'm gonna add for now, so. I'm just going to throw the lid on them and put them on my propagation rack. So yeah, we got some new projects on the way. Uh, I'm, I'm really anxious to fill up the bookcase that I took upstairs and uh, put some terrariums in there and some other interesting things. I think that'll be really fun. I'm probably going to end up moving my waterfall up there just so we have a little bit more room on the counter. It's a little cluttered where it is next to the, uh, next to the shrimp tank. It's doing pretty well. Uh, I do. I would like to change the light up on it a little bit. I like to, it to be lit a little bit differently. But I won't make a whole video about that. That'll just kind of show up in the next in the next project. Okay, folks, that's about it. Next week we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna build a couple of terrariums. I'm also uh, I'm gonna try to get started on the aquarium swap out from upstairs. So I've got an aquarium project on the way. Uh, probably what I'll do is I'll be filming that over the course of maybe a couple of weeks and then I'll start presenting it. So next week we're going to make a terrarium. That's something I can do real quick for you guys for a Sunday video. Uh, I've got some neat ideas for it though. It's not going to be boring. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be kind of different and interesting, I hope. If this helped you at all or you found it interesting, you know, sometimes the way other people organize their clutter. Uh, can be interesting. So I hope this was interesting for you. If that's the case, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to see you here again. That's all I got for you this week. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I like <laughs> and a light I'm going to take upstairs. Hey folks, today we be hey folks, today we delve deep into the uh, we're basically taking things like this, put them in things like this. So it's all coming up right after this.